Here's a problem we've probably all had at one time or another. You go into your Sublime Text settings and set up your default indentation preferences, and everything seems to be working great until one day you open a file that you've been working on previously, and the indentation is all wrong. It doesn't seem to respect the settings. What's, what's going on here? Well, this is a very common problem to have, and today I'm going to show you what's actually happening behind the scenes and how you can get the indentation that you want. <music> Hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odan Nerd here, welcome back to another Sublime Text tutorial video where today we're going to be covering why sometimes when you set the tab and indentation settings that you like, they don't always seem to be respected. Before we get into that though, just a quick reminder that tomorrow is December 1st, that means November is starting, the time of year where we spend one hour minimum every day for the entire month of December working on programming and talking about it. And I'm doing that over on my alternate channel which is linked down in the description and in the end card theater at the end of this video, probably in a card up above my head right now while I'm saying this, where I'm going to be doing two live streams a week, minimum, uh, health permitting, working on a package in Sublime Text, a package that will actually allow you to manage your YouTube channel from directly inside of Sublime Text itself, something I worked on last December. And this year, I'm going to flesh that out even more. So if that's interesting to you and you want to jump in, watch how packages are made, ask questions about plugin development or just Sublime Text in general, we welcome you in there. Of course, you could also subscribe to this channel if you have haven't already by using those buttons down below the video, ring the bell notification icon, because all through the month of November, we're going to be doing Plugin 101 here on this channel as a way to celebrate and promote the idea that everybody should know a little bit about software development. But with all that out of the way, let's jump into the meaty goodness. So this situation plays out a little something like this. You decide that you want to configure how your indent works in Sublime. So you go into your preferences, and you can do that a variety of ways. You can use the menu or the command palette to choose the preferences settings option, or you can do what I do and use the view package file command to open your settings file directly, which I find just a little bit cleaner for demonstration purposes here, but you do you. And inside of that settings file, there are a couple of settings that control the thing that you want to do here, tab size and translate tabs to spaces. Now, translate tabs to spaces is a Boolean, true or false. It controls whether or not when a physical tab is attempted to be inserted into the buffer by any means whatsoever, should it be inserted as a tab or should it be converted to spaces instead. And tab size controls how big tab characters appear to be when they are in the buffer or how many spaces they will be converted into. And you, through this, you can determine whether you want to have your files indented with tabs or not and how big the indent levels are supposed to be for the files that you would like to work with. So say, for example, you set those settings to these settings that I have here with a tab size of four and translate tabs to spaces turned on because who wants to have physical tab characters? But of course, you set these settings any way you like. No judgment here. And once you're done that, you save the settings and everything is good. And when you create a new file, you look down in the status bar and you can see that it seems to be doing the thing that you wanted to do. And when you start entering some text into the file, it seems to be doing the thing you want and everything is great. And then, and then you open a file that you've previously worked on and the settings do not seem to match. And sometimes this is visually distinguishable just by looking at it that the indent doesn't seem to be right. And sometimes you don't notice it until you start working and tabs aren't working the way they want. Indent isn't going the place that you expect it to go. And you look down in the status bar and you see that it doesn't say the settings that you said. It says spaces instead of tabs or two instead of four or something along those lines. What's actually going on here? Well, there's actually a couple of different ways that this could be going wrong for you. The most common of these two ways is this setting right here, detect indentation, which as we can see here, defaults to being turned on. Now, what does this setting actually do? What it does is it tells Sublime that when it loads a file, it should examine the content of that file to try to determine how it's indented. Is it indented with spaces or is it indented with tabs? And is it indented two characters, four characters, eight characters, three characters? What's the value here? And once it gathers that information as a local setting in inside of just that one file while it's open, it will change the value of the tab size and the translate tabs to spaces settings to whatever it was that it detected. Now it does this for a couple of important reasons. One is that whatever you set those two settings to controls how Sublime indents files as you're working with them. It doesn't cause Sublime to modify the content of your file in any way. If you really want your files to be indented with 
one character tabs, then if you have existing files, it's up to you to modify those. Sublime's not going to modify them on your behalf, although you can use some of its options to make that task much, much easier. So as a sanity for yourself, the reason why this setting exists and is defaulted to true is because although you may intend for all files that you create to match a certain type of indent style because that's the way you work. That doesn't mean that you might not run across files created by other people or by yourself in the past before you adopted these settings that aren't indented that way. And you really do want the tab size and the translate tabs to spaces settings to mimic the file that you're actually in and not the style that you're working with right now. So this setting defaults to being turned on to make sure that the settings are always appropriate for what it appears to be uh, in the file so that everything will work for you the way you like. But if you don't like that, if you'd rather have your settings always enforced no matter what, the easiest solution to this problem is to just jump into your preferences and turn this setting off. Now, the other way that this could be going wrong has to do with the fact that there's more than one place for settings to be applied. And this could be the case if you even you know, flip that detect indentation setting and it still doesn't seem to be working for you. Now we're not going to go into a ton of detail on this because hey we've covered this on the channel in a previous video which I have helpfully linked down in the description below and probably in a card up above my head. Everything to do with the setting system and sublime text and how it works. So what we're just going to say here is that there are seven different places that settings can appear in sublime text. Yes seven although you don't necessarily see some of those uh, at any given point. And I'm going to throw up on the screen right now, an excerpt from the official documentation that covers these things and say that settings can appear in any and all of these places and the closer to the bottom of this list that the setting appears, that's the one that's going to take effect. So your user settings are only number three on this particular list of things. So there are a few other places where settings could be set that could still be overriding your settings even if detect indentation is turned off. Now the two most obvious of these, the ones that you're going to see are your project specific settings and your syntax specific settings. So in order to determine how this is affecting you, think when is the indentation wrong? Is it right in a plain text file, but not in a Python file, if you normally use Python or a HTML file or CSS file, if you're a web developer or something like that? Is there a certain type of file where it seems like the setting doesn't apply? but in other files it does. In that case, it's probably a syntax specific setting. Or does it seem like it only works in one project, but not in another project? In that case, it's probably a project specific setting. Now, the way you would actually fix a problem such as this would be to open a file of the particular type and use the preferences settings syntax specific option to open the settings file that applies only to files of that particular type of file and put your desired indentation inside of there and that should solve your problem. Now this can happen because when the developers of a particular package, be it the developers of Sublime or the developers of a third party package, depending on what language you're actually using, create the syntax definition, they also have the ability to create some default settings that apply to that particular type of file. And you would do this for the same reason that the detect indentation setting exists, because maybe there are types of settings that you normally want to use, but maybe they don't make sense in certain types of files uh, for various reasons, and you want them to be different in that one. And the prime example of this that comes shipped with Sublime, and you can use by uh, view by using the view package file command to open the yaml slash yaml.sublime uh, settings file such as we have right here. These are the settings that apply to yaml files. And we can see here that it is very specifically setting translate tabs to spaces true and setting the tab size to two as well. And the comments tell us why, because physical tabs aren't allowed in yaml. So if you are a person that prefers physical tab files, tabs in your files, rather, you don't want to have physical tabs in yaml files because that's not valid for that particular type of file. Similarly, make files tend to turn tabs on instead. And uh, the tab size here is set to be two because uh, as it says here, uh, it can be a kind of tedious to work with an indentation bigger than two because of the way that YAML files are structured. That one's more of a judgment call, if you will, so you can modify that one if you like. So if you're having a problem with an indent in a particular type of file, try modifying your syntax-specific settings. That'll probably solve the problem. And if you're not 
it's happening not in a particular type of file, but in a particular project, then you've probably set up project specific settings uh, in that file as well, or maybe somebody else did if you're sharing a project. And in that case, you could use the project edit project uh, menu item while you have the project open to see the settings inside of there. Now, do you want to modify these settings if it's your project? Maybe you do, maybe you don't if you're sharing this project with somebody else. If you're trying to maintain a consistent code style or something like that, that's a judgment call on your end. And of course, the last item in that list of hierarchy is buffer specific settings. Those are settings that are applied by things like use you using uh, commands and menu items. Say if you actually were to modify the indent right down from that uh, menu that appears if you click on the indentation in the status bar of the window. So those particular settings, well, you'd probably know if you set those. So that's probably not the problem here. Hopefully you've found this informative and it's solved your indentation issues. And uh, if it has, please use those buttons down below to thumb subscribe and share as you deem appropriate. Ring the bell notification icon if you'd like to be notified of new videos when they become available. And now that we're here at the end of the video, you can also see the link to my other channel. If you'd like to participate in the live streams that I'll be doing all through the month of November, you can go ahead and subscribe to that channel too, or follow me on Twitter at ODATNerd. And until I see you next, wherever that is, this is ODATNerd asking you to please have a sublime day.